An Air Traffic Service Unit, ATSU clearance, constitutes the authority for an aircraft to proceed in accordance with its flight plan, only in so far as known air traffic is concerned. Clearances are based upon known traffic conditions which may affect the safety of aircraft operations. This will include not only aircraft in the air, but those manoeuvring on the ground, as well as vehicles and any local temporary instructions. If a pilot in command deems a clearance not suitable, he may ask for, and if practicable receive, an amended clearance. But remember that an ATSU clearance relates to traffic and aerodromes only, and does not in any way absolve a pilot in command from any responsibility to comply with all the rules and regulations concerning aircraft operation. Air traffic control will issue such clearances as are necessary to meet the objectives of collision prevention and the expedition and maintenance of an orderly flow of air traffic. In control areas, the most direct routings shall be given to all transiting flights. Aircraft intending to undertake supersonic flight shall, whenever practicable, be cleared for the transonic acceleration prior to departure. Air traffic control clearances are issued by area control in two circumstances and in accordance with the following conditions. For departing aircraft and for en route aircraft. When aircraft are departing an aerodrome, area control centres shall forward a clearance to approach control units or aerodrome control towers with the least possible delay after the receipt of a request is made by these units or prior to such a request, if possible. It would be normal practice for air traffic control at the departure aerodrome to contact the air traffic control centre when an aircraft requests engine start or pushback and place the clearance on hold. If the clearance has not come through by the time the aircraft requests taxi, then the local air traffic control allows the aircraft to move and the clearance issued when it arrives. If it has not done so by the time the aircraft reaches the runway holding point, then the aircraft is directed to a waiting area until the clearance can be issued. Once received, the clearance is read to the aircraft and must be read back exactly as received to confirm that the pilot has received it and understands what is required. For aircraft flying en route, air traffic control clearances must be issued early enough to ensure that they are transmitted to an aircraft in sufficient time for it to be complied with. If a pilot requests, a cruise climb clearance will be issued if conditions permit between specific levels or above a specific level. A pilot may request a reduced cruising speed to delay his arrival at a destination. For flights with intermediate stops, clearances will normally be issued for the first destination only. Follow-on clearances will be issued by the Air Traffic Control Center of the Flight Information Region in which the aircraft has landed. Clearances are to contain positive and concise information and shall be phrased in a standard manner. A clearance shall contain, in the following order, aircraft identification, clearance limit, route of flight, level or levels of flight for the entire route or part thereof, and changes of levels if required, necessary instructions or information on other matters such as SSR transponder approach and departure manoeuvres, communications and time of expiry of the clearance. The route of the flight shall be detailed in each clearance when deemed necessary. The phrase, cleared via planned route, may be used to describe any route or portion thereof that reflects the submitted flight plan, and sufficient routing details are given to definitely establish the aircraft on its route. The phrases cleared via departure or cleared via arrival may be used to clear aircraft on laid down published departure and arrival routes that have been established by the appropriate ATS authority. A clearance issued covering a requested change in a flight plan will include the exact nature of the change. If a level change is involved and more than one level is contained in the flight plan, all such levels are to be included in the reclearance. If traffic conditions do not permit a requested reclearance, the pilot will be advised, unable to clear, 
If warranted, an alternative will be offered. The issuance of a clearance to a VFR flight to fly, subject to maintaining its own separation and remaining in visual flight meteorological conditions, has no other object other than to signify that for the duration of the clearance, the provision of aircraft separation by air traffic control is not undertaken. So, when requested by an aircraft, and provided it is agreed by any affected aircraft, then an area control centre may authorise a controlled flight in Class D and E airspace in VMC to fly and maintain its own separation whilst remaining VMC. The pilot in command must ensure that his aircraft does not constitute a collision hazard. The following provisos apply. Any clearance shall be for a specific portion of the flight below 10,000 feet during climb or descent. If a flight under VMC becomes impracticable, an IFR flight is to be provided with alternate instructions to be complied with for the term of the clearance. In the event, the pilot of an IFR flight is to comply with the alternate clearance.